49. Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. Dan shall be a serpent in the way, a viper by the path that bites the horse's heels so that his rider falls backward. I wait for your salvation, O Lord. Revelation 19. Then I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. The one sitting on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes are like a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written that no one knows but himself. He is clothed in a robe dipped in blood, and the name by which he is called is the Word of God. And the armies of heaven, arrayed in fine linen, white and pure, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with a rod of iron. He will tread the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God the Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Matthew 24 For as the lightning comes from the east and shines as far as the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Revelation 19 and I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth with their armies gathered to make war against him who was sitting on the horse and against his army. Revelation 13, And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can fight against it?
Mounted aboard this heavily modified Boeing 747, the airborne laser can track and destroy intercontinental ballistic missiles even before they leave enemy territory. To be effective, its highly charged lasers have to work over incredible distances. The exact range is not something that, that is releasable, but uh, we do admit that it's in the hundreds of kilometers. Rick Garcia was the director of public affairs for the ABL project. But the airborne laser can fly over friendly territory looking for targets that are well into the enemy's area. Before taking out an incoming missile, the ABL uses a whole bank of sensors and low-powered lasers to size up the target. On the skin of the aircraft, there are six infrared sensors, one in the nose, one in the tail, a couple on either side. And when a missile is launched, the hot exhaust plume from that missile will set off one or more of those infrared sensors. So then the first of the four lasers fires, and so it fires a relatively low-powered laser with a wide field of view toward that missile. Some of that light will hit the missile body and reflect back. That'll tell the aircraft the speed, the range, the altitude, even the point of origin, and possibly where it's going to impact. Next, a low-power beam gives a precise fix on where to focus the energy. Then, to maximize the energy that reaches the target, a third beam measures the air turbulence between the ABL and the target. Using the same optical systems that telescopes use to see further into space, the ABL instantaneously reacts, overcoming these atmospheric distortions. This allows the full force of the killer laser to reach the missile, singling out its weakest part, the fuel tank. So all you have to do is hit the body of that tank, get it to heat up, get it to start to crack, and then it explodes from the inside out. So it's a catastrophic failure at that point. And from the time that that first infrared sensor goes off to the time that that missile is toast can be anywhere from 8 to 12 seconds.